so so we're talking about you know real estate investors adjusting for the market but we have to understand that lenders are going to do the same thing yeah these big lenders because you said Athos is doing that now mm -hmm. we're going to see more and more lenders get smarter on the non-qualifying end and start allowing second homes and things like that. Now they have to be regulated a little bit differently because second homes are really kind of primary as well, or owner off anyway. Owner off, yeah. Um, so so it, it, they're going to be limited as to what they can do. But as we've been seeing the conventional loans kind of dwindle for investors and second homeowners, we've seen them expand on our end with yep. the non-qualifying. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I know, I mean, everyone, Every knows, day it's new. everyone knows that they cut it from 14 to 7% on what they're doing. And there's, you know, definitely rumblings that, um, you know, they're going to do it again. They're going to cut it in half again. Yeah. So um, that's just going to open up a big, a bigger market uh, share for private lenders or, or, you know, aggregators of, of capital. Cause you're getting a, I mean, you're getting, I think I just saw, was it RCN? I think it was RCN. They just did their, no, I'm sorry. It was Two Rock. Two Rock did their first uh, securitization of long-term rental product of 200 and some million. So that's a lot of bucks. So, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of capital flooding into that market. Yeah. Because that's not really, it, it's not where it used to be anymore there. Yeah. And, and the people making those decisions are investors. They mm -hmm. understand our world. I mean, it's only a matter of time before like so much capital floods in, dilutes uh, returns, and then it pulls back out. I mean, yeah. that's, that's just what happens. I mean, that pendulum <laughs> yeah. swinging back. I mean, I mean, uh, I've I've seen on the investor loan side as low as three point seven five. I mean, that's getting really close. To what a bank can to do. Conventional. Yeah, that's to, exactly yeah, right. Getting really Probably close. better than a non-interoccupied that you would get conventional. Well, I mean, it's definitely a uh, lower dock and probably uh, happens faster. Yeah. It closes faster. That's, that's just amazing. Yeah, I mean, keep it coming. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, uh, we're pricing them between, um, you know, 3.9 and four and a half. Yeah. Right now. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's, uh, that's good. I mean, it, 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 and the thing is like, my, you know, the contrarian thought is, well, how long can this last? Yeah. Because we have shiny object syndrome. People start throwing money right. into, uh, <laughs> into an asset because it's, you know, it's safe, but it's or safer, perceived yeah. safer and, uh, and produces a good yield. Well, how long until that, that low, lower yield, um, is, uh, definitely, uh, the safety of it is not, uh, a factor anymore. Like, well, I can't really take that low yield anymore. I got to be a little more aggressive. Yeah. The safety doesn't matter. So let me, let me try so something it'll change else. Right back. And then that's what happens. I mean, we, we saw that in, um, they, you know, money into the private lending fix and flip space, mm -hmm. you know, it's still there, but, um, I, I, you know, here recently the shift has been moving capital from that to the long, to the long term. Yeah. And which is amazing because a year ago today, it was almost non-existent, wasn't it? The long term? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unqualifying long oh, yeah. term oh, yeah. was I mean, almost non-existent. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough to get before COVID and it shut down mm -hmm. with I mean pretty much shut down. Even fix and flip did for a lot of people. Yeah, for a lot of people. So not us though. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's you know, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. But yeah. um I don't know. I, I wish I had a crystal ball. That's right. So, so the question was, how do you prepare for the market changes? Right. Yeah. How do you prepare? And we'll go back to the original answer that you gave with. <laughs> well, plus, you know, I, you say, I, I say no, but, <laughs> but I mean, you have to, you know, there, there's so many different factors. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 so I, I like, I was telling uh, Wendy and Bill this, this story, um, you take, you take a 10,000, um, you know, 10, let's just say 10,000 incompetent uh, fund managers and you give them a 55% chance of losing all their money in one year. You give them a 45% chance of, of making money. And I, I'm not making this up. I got this from a book. Um, so it wasn't the internet. And it, yeah, it wasn't the, <laughs> uh, Fooled by randomness was, one, was the book. But um, and so you run that scenario for five straight years. 
And what you end up with is, a, you know, 192, something like that, 192 incompetent fund managers who now have a five year track record of making money. Now, original pool was 10,000, but you still have 192 who don't know what they're doing, who still made money. So dumb luck. So, dumb, dumb luck. I mean, it's just just numbers. So you can prepare and prepare and prepare all you want. Sometimes the market just shifts. Your portfolio isn't allocated correctly. You're in something that, you know, that has for the last hundred years been a staple of a society that has returned good yield and it'll never go down. And then it does. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, prepare right. all you want. I mean, I would always recommend, you know, look at the data, use the data, look what's happening around in the world around you in your local market, um, adjust accordingly and, you know, have a little bit of luck. That's right. And don't be afraid to make a move. Yeah. I'm not going to stand up here and tell someone like, I know exactly what to do so that you can avoid all risk in the market. Yeah. Like no one, if someone tells you that they're like, full of it. So full, like, <laughs> like, I, you know, Wendy and I work hard. We analyze deals. We analyze the market. Um, and we still lose money. That's right. That's we right. Still so invest money. with us, folks. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we we invest in, in an asset type that we can control more or less the we amount go of with loss. The least amount of risk. Yeah. We can control the amount of loss. So we we can we can like I said before, you can if you can control your level of losses, mm -hmm. you can control your level of yield. That's right. To a better extent. That's right.